and welcome back to the Claire Codes channel. Today we will be covering the Big O. Once again, we are using Cracking the Coding Interview by Gail Lockman McDowell. So the Big O, very exciting, and also a bit of an intimidating subject for me. So this should be a wild ride. Once again, it is important that I preface this video with the following message. This is not a substitute for buying this book. This is an amazing book. We are just using this as a jumping off point. So without further ado, let's take the big O on. Buckle your seatbelts, folks. I'm also adding a new segment. Okay, so I just got this today. It's Minerals of the World. And the first thing we are going to address in the Minerals of the World little um, briefcase I got here is boop -a -doo, Red Adventuring, which is this one right there, if you can see. It's beautiful. Let's actually take her out. Ooh, nice. Okay, so Red Adventuring. The origin is Brazil. The description, Adventuring is a, a variety of quartz with a metallic iridescence. Aventurine differs from green quartz due to the presence of small specks of mica. It can also include hematite and geothite. Powers. Mental powers. Eyesight. Gambling. Money. Peace. Healing. And luck. Quite a variety. So again, this is red aventurine. And now onto the big O. Ha! So as you can tell, um, it is the next day. I don't know if you can tell my hair is wet. But same Teddy Fresh hoodie. <laughs> it's the next day because this is kind of an intimidating topic, as I mentioned, and wanted to be in the right mindset. Okay, so let's jump in. The first thing Lachman says is this is such an important concept that we are dedicating an entire long chapter to it. So <laughs> right off the bat, you're like, okay. All right, so there's an analogy. Um, we're going to skip that. But the first thing we're going to talk about is the big O time complexity. And big O, there's a measure is time, and there's also big O for space. Okay, so there are many runtimes for a big O, and the most common ones are O log N, O N log N, O N, O N squared, and O 2 to the N. So there's best case, worst case, and expected case. And the best case is like all elements are equal. This can be like quicksort. And you're just traversing through the array one time. And that is O of N. Worst case is that you kind of have to, like there's a pivot and it's always the largest element in the array. So this can easily happen, as she states. And this is O to the N to the 2 runtime. Expected case. So... Hopefully, and usually, the, you know, these wonderful or bad solutions will not happen. And this is an expected runtime of O, N, log N. Okay, so moving on to space complexity. Um, so time is important, but it's also not the only thing that matters. Space is kind of like the amount of memory required by an algorithm. For example, you know, stack space can be recursive calls, that's included too. Um, so she includes some code here. So code that kind of runs through the problem once is O of n space. And then if there's kind of like an adding situation, yeah, kind of an adding situation, that's going to be O one space. All right, and then she has a nice graph here that I'll include. And the graph depicts the rate of increase of some of the big, uh, common big O times for space. And also for time complexity. So it's good to know, like, obviously, as it gets more exponential, that's bad. But as it gets flatter, much better. There's also, you know, multi-part algorithms, add, verse, multiply. So it depends on the constants, you know, of, you know, O to what degree. Then she goes over um, amortized time, which we are not going to be covering. So a takeaway is when you see a problem where there are a number of elements and the problem space gets halved each time, 
that'll likely be log of n runtime. So that's a good way to think about it if it's halved. You know, typically um, a binary tree search is O log n. Recursive runtimes, this is tricky, she says, because you're kind of like going back through this algorithm and this can have, you know, uh, just multiple different complexities. So typically I think it's O two to the n and then you would have, you know, you'd only need O of n memory space. And I think that this is something I would like to learn more about. So I'm definitely gonna do some extra research and I'll try to put in some of my research. So next we have some examples and I'm going to walk through these. So first an example of ON time. And this is when you're, you know, it doesn't really matter if you're iterating through the array twice, but it's typically like, you know, a for loop or just separated for loops. Then if you have nested for loops, that's gonna be O n squared time. This iteration has, you know, a loop of O n times and then a loop nested of O n times. So it's squared. Example three, do, 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 is also O n squared. And this also, I think she kind of goes through more of um, a nested for loop. Okay, example four, there's a nested for loop and an if statement. This is not O n squared because there are two different inputs and both matter. So this is also a common mistake is to have, this would be um, an O a b. And again, I think this is really important to buy this book and really analyze these examples because you know there's only so much I can talk about here because I'm covering a lot. So if you reverse an array, then that's gonna be O n time. She goes over that. Okay, what if we look at an algorithm that takes in an array of strings, sorts these strings, and then sorts and then sorts the full array? You know, many candidates, she states, um, you know, since you're sorting an array, it would be O n log n. But we have to do this for the whole string. You actually get A times S log A time. Um, yeah, I'll try to put in another graph. I think some of this is a little confusing for me. Cause I, okay, sorting each string is O, S, log S, but because you're sorting the strings and then the full array, that's what's going on. What's an example, What's a, what happens if a code is adding all the values of nodes in a balanced binary search tree? Okay, this can be looked at two ways and it's actually O, N. There's also so there are, there are a lot of examples here. Uh, there's another recursion example. Ooh, she has a very tricky example. Okay, this is a good one. Example 13 is for a Fibonacci sequence, which is something hopefully I'll cover in another um, segment, just different ways of doing the Fibonacci sequence. So I think that's a very important algorithm and it actually comes up in coding tests a lot in my experience. So this would be O to the t O two to the n. So Fibonacci actually takes zero two to the n, but it matters what the value of n is. And then she also has an example of Fibonacci using a memo, which I think is really important to know because you can have like the brute force solution and then the more advanced solution. So if you're having a coding test, it's good to, especially like a whiteboarding test, to walk through these two ideas. Then she goes over an O log n uh, problem. Then she gives additional problems wherein you kind of answer them yourself using what you learned, and then there's solutions. So I'm not gonna go through those, again, buy this amazing book, and please go through them yourselves because it's a great exercise. So I hope you learned something. Um, again, I think hopefully I'll put in some great screenshots for memory's sake and for to elaborate on these concepts I talked about. I'm planning on spending the rest of my day it's just studying like straight algorithms and coding through them. I found this great Udemy course, which is a hundred algorithm problems. The hundred algorithm challenge, I'll include a link below. I haven't quite started it yet, but it looks really great. Pro tip, if you're on Udemy, try not to pay full price. There are certain times when they have discounts. And then if you also like Google coupons, typically you can get 
these like $94 outrageous priced courses, not outrageous, definitely support creators, but these courses for like about, you know, 12 to $10, 10 to 12. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next time. And please, if you enjoyed it, like um, or subscribe to my channel. Uh, Till next time, adios. And I'm on the road.